everyone welcome to your retirement resources Friday I haven't done this in a little while so I wanted to come in with something that I think is going to be really beneficial for those of you either retired or are looking to retire and one of those things is having your goals kind of inset and then making sure that you do or you take the right steps in order to find out or figure out how to get there I heard this once and it, it stuck with me is that everybody has the same goal right everyone has the same goal so having the goal doesn't make you unique doing the thing that will get you to the goal is what really matters so in the world of retirement planning and I come to say this because the stock market has dropped uh, quite a bit again today not sure what the news was but whatever it was the stock market didn't like it the stock market went down and obviously most of us don't have the time or the know-how to trade this kind of information so we just lost the money but would you have lost money if you knew what you wanted and how to get what you wanted in the traditional sense me being a financial planner we really only know one thing right put money in the 401k put money in the ira that money goes into the stock market and whatever happens that's how we get or how we retire but that's not all you can do there are things that are different things that can help you grow your wealth without using the stock market or with using some products that are tied to the stock market many of you might know where i'm going with this you can buy things like i bonds i did a video about how to buy i bonds you can find it on my channel i should link it down below you can also use fixed annuities or fixed index annuities which protect your principal and give you you know anywhere between zero to maybe seven percent a year based on either if it's an index performing or if it's a fixed account and a lot of times now because the bonds and the 10 year 10 year interest rate is right around three percent fixed annuities can get you anywhere between you know two to four and a half percent per year risk-free I mean the only risk that is there is the risk that the annuity company or insurance company that backs that annuity goes under it's I mean it could happen but the risks are pretty low especially if you choose a well-established company so where are we going with this well, for those of you who are looking to put money away into, like, let's say, a CD or take money out of the stock market, look at this chart. This chart compares a CD and a fixed annuity. They both offer relatively the same protection. That means you can't lose your principal. Each of them have what's called a surrender period or a point where you cannot take the money out. And if you do, you get penalized. The only difference is one is from a bank and one is from an insurance company. The bank provides you with, I guess, branches and online support, whereas the insurance company, you'd have to go through an agent and it might be a little bit, you know, more of a hassle signing into that online account because you don't have it with the bank. But the benefits are quite, quite a lot. I mean, as you can see here on the chart, you get way more from the fixed annuity instead of going with the bank. And that's not to say that it's because the bank is, I don't know, less risky. They're both the same. And if you can say, well, the agent's getting paid more. If you think the agent, like an, an annuity agent, is getting paid more than the bank is, just look at how much more the bank is giving you. Nothing. They give you far less. So the bank actually makes the most money from products like this. Well, in comparison. So if you're looking because you don't want to make someone else rich, Either of these things aren't gonna be your kind of, I guess, best place. You need to look at what's best for you. Second part of my kind of talking points here. The first one was fixed annuities and alternatives to stock market. Second point is the goal, right? I talked earlier about how we are told that the best way to save for retirement is put money in the stock market and have that money just grow. Unfortunately, it's really difficult to match the goal if not only is the goal a moving target but your portfolio is a moving target 
there are many things like target funds, risk allocation funds, all that fun stuff which target a rate of return, but none of that's guaranteed. Even a risk allocation portfolio could drop 10, 20% in a year. So what you can do or what is an option for you is buying a fixed annuity or putting more money into bonds, bonds that you purchase from treasury.gov, right? Treasurydirect.gov. I'll have the link below. I don't exactly know what it is. I can't remember, but I, I have I bonds because the inflationary bonds are paying 9%, over 9% right now, right? Per year, that's, that's really good. And stock market isn't really performing that well. The other option, <laughs> I don't suggest it, but you could be like me and day trade. Um, I don't do that very often. I honestly shouldn't day trade because I don't spend enough time keeping up with my charts, but I did today because I just, you know, a lot of data and a lot of my gut feeling pointed to going lower. So I trade options today, you know, I, more most people's portfolio is probably down a percent or two my portfolio is up five percent so it's it's just how i trade and i don't do this for anybody i only do this for me so i'm not saying that you should go give your money to me i'm i don't take money um <laughs> i'm just saying that these are things you could do fixed annuities inflationary bonds and i just feel like this video i, I wanted to make sure that all of you folks knew that there are other options and if you have questions if you're saying matt annuities are a scam i saw this on Susie orman or you know dave ramsey and they both say just put it into index funds that's that's well that's not always the answer and it's not that their advice is bad it's just that that might not be the best way for you, right? Each asset has four pretty much goals, right? Or four, four kind of advantages. You would have tax leverage. That means they have a good tax um, structure. This is usually like REITs or private placements that have kind of a, they're more like, um, they're, Put in a way that's tax advantage or capital gains right if you hold a stock for long enough if you have a stock that has qualified dividends you hold the stock for a year you get better tax rates right that's one kind of benefit you have some things that have yield right things like the i bonds which shoot out a lot of dividends or yield then we have equity appreciation that means that it's going to be more expensive tomorrow we think like tech companies growth companies right so those things have to kind of align. And then we have like the leverage, like could we, is this thing good enough where we can see buying it today and it would 10X in the next 10 years, you know? Those are kind of things we look at when we look at assets, but we have to have the goal, right? And the last goal that I'm talking about is the goal of preservation. There are some times in our life or some Bucket, buckets of money that we want to keep and we don't care about inflation we don't care about like you know missing out on growth we want our asset to just not disappear we don't want to lose this money right we can do all the right things for our entire life and make one bad choice and lose it all right you could save up your retirement for the next or for the last 50 years and the next stock market crash comes i'm not saying the stock market is going to crash more but i'm reading more and more articles about how you know we're still in the middle of a bubble the bubble hasn't even begun to manifest itself yet and you know articles media all that stuff it, it it's all flip side right like we could say it's all over because there's so much selling and because of the high inflation rates, everything's more expensive. Therefore, that data has yet to be priced into the market. Or the data is not priced into the market. Who really knows? Nobody. So really, the only way to make sure that you're not going to lose any money is to put money into products that don't lose any money. Right? So back to the very beginning, CDs, or bank account, savings account, or something like a fixed annuity, inflationary bond, um principal protected items and that's kind of what i wanted to talk about today and that's pretty much it i hope 
this helps kind of get your mind thinking about other things. If you made it this far in the video, thank you. Check the links below, see if you have any questions about anything. I really just wanna know what or how I can help make, I guess, your retirement a little bit more clear because a lot of us in my field, um, well, maybe not a lot of advisors, but a lot of people, regular everyday people, when it comes to figuring out what their finances, how they should manage their finances, what to invest in, you really don't even know what questions to ask. And it's not about the questions that you ask, like, is this too risky, is it not risky? It really comes down to you and how you make decisions and how you value certain attributes of an investment product. And that's all there is to it, really. So I'll stop talking now. You guys all have a great weekend. I'll see you in the next one.